Hello, my name's James Titcombe. I work for CQC as an advisor in patient safety, and I'm here today to talk to CQC's three chief inspectors about their new roles. And I'd just like to start off by asking you to introduce yourselves and um, say a few words about um, why you're here and what difference you want to make, please. Hi James, I'm Andrea Sutcliffe, I'm the Chief Inspector of Adult Social Care at the Care Quality Commission and the reason why I'm here is because I want to make a difference in adult social care um, by making sure that we're focusing on asking the questions that matter to people, um, making sure that services are safe um, and effective but also that they're caring um, and well led and that we make sure that they're responsive to people's needs. Oh, I'm Steve Field, I'm the uh, Chief Inspector of General Practice which covers general medical practice, dental practice, safeguarding, prisons, amongst other things. And um, my drive in life is around reducing health inequalities. And for this role specifically, it's about making sure that people have uh, access to excellent primary care wherever they are in England. Hi James, I'm Mike Richards. I'm the Chief Inspector of Hospitals. I'm responsible for hospitals but also for mental health trusts and for community health trusts uh, and for ambulance services. I've taken the job on because I really believe that good inspection can highlight the problems that there are and highlight also what's good about services but can then lead to improvement across the service. Just before we start the interview, um, just a few words about um the CQC Action Group and the organisations we've asked to give us some questions today. We had um, a fantastic response and over 200 questions. The first question from Jan Robinson. It seems from all the well-publicised cases of failure, e.g. Staffordshire, that poor care has been recognised by some, but it's nevertheless continued for many years. And Jan asks, how, how are you going to address that? What I think that we need to do from the Care Quality Commission is actually be very clear about what it is that we expect to happen, inspect on that basis um, and regulate on that basis, but also think about making sure that it's sustained because one of the problems that we've got is as inspectors we're just going in yeah. and out um, on, on, on individual occasions and what we need to make sure is that actually there's proper services being led properly by by people who care about what they're doing and are well supported. Our task now is to look at mm. hospitals in the round and to look at all sorts of different services there uh, and our approach is a quite different one from the past and I am confident that we will be able to find both good and poor care in these hospitals and we'll be able to report on that openly. We have some of the best general practice in the world in this country, but whenever we look at the variation, if we look at outcomes, of, when we look at prescribing, there are indicators that there's unacceptable variation. And what we've got to try and do is make sure everyone has a, a safe and effective primary care service, whether that's dentistry or general practice, where they live in England. And um, what we will do is be absolutely transparent about the information, and we will visit to make sure that patients do have that safe service. In all the questions that we got, a lot of them were about staff. So mainly, are there enough staff? But also about, um, are they well enough trained? Are they caring? So um, I'd just like a, a, to ask you all really, how are we going to deal with that in, in the approach we have to inspections? How are we going to take into, into account those concerns? Well, I think it comes down to the five fundamental questions that we're going to ask um, because all of them actually depend on staff doing a job well. Yeah. So if we're asking the question about um, is the service caring, that's absolutely focused on does staff have enough time to provide support appropriately, are they trained properly so they're confident and capable in what they're doing, um, are there enough of them to actually be able to provide a caring response um, to the people who are needing services, some of whom will be in very very um, vulnerable situations. Mm -hmm. So I think that you know that's just one example, but I think that all of the questions that we are asking will get to the heart of what's really important with services and the people who ask those questions are completely right. It's about the staff. We've done a small number of inspections now, but I think we've already learnt from those. And what we're seeing is that it isn't just one uniform picture across a whole hospital or trust, that there can be variation. So it might be Ward 3 at one hospital, Ward 6 at another hospital, uh, that is either understaffed or not very well led. Um, and it can be a combination of those two things. And so what we need to be able to do is to drill down to the level of the individual ward. That doesn't necessarily mean that we need masses of extra 
stretch trough across the whole mm. hospital, but there may be individual wards where that is needed, mm. and we will say so. We know that the poorer areas of the country have fewer GPs. Mm. Uh, we know that some practices, GP practices, don't have any nurses at all. Mm. And in the 21st century, you need an integrated, multi-professional mm. team. Whether that's nurses and doctors coming out of hospital and working in primary care, or whether it's pharmacists and doctors working hand in glove with social mm. care. Uh, I, I would support both Mike and Andrea. The, the answer to, to most of these is around the workforce, having the right numbers in the right place, mm. doing the right thing, but most importantly with the right values. Okay, well thank you very much for answering our uh, viewers' questions and um, thank you very much for watching.